Hi, I'm Becky Stern, and today we're going to talk about using code libraries with Arduino and some of the fun devices they can control. One of the Arduino community's biggest superpowers is code libraries, bundles of specialized programming that empower you to leverage complex computing tools using simple commands. Arduino recognizes these add-on modules, and then you can use the commands within your program. Arduino libraries exist for all sorts of complex tasks, like controlling large numbers of LEDs, reading sensors, creating sounds, manipulating data, writing to displays, and many more. There are a bunch of libraries that come with the Arduino software, but anyone can publish a library, and there's thousands more you can install. We'll start with my favorite, smart addressable LEDs, each of which contain a WS2812 strip. These are commonly called NeoPixels, which is the Adafruit brand name. Each Pixels chip communicates with the Arduino board and other pixels in the strip. It can't light up without a controller. To control the strip, some additional Arduino functions are required, and we can get them by installing the code library. To install libraries, I've opened up the Library Manager under the Sketch menu, Include Library, Manage Libraries, then searching for NeoPixel and clicking Install. Now I'm all set to use the NeoPixel library in my Arduino sketches. You can use the Library Manager to install new libraries as you need them. Take a close look at these pixels. Each one contains a very small RGB LED, which can theoretically create any color of light. However, generating pure white poses a challenge for RGB LEDs and often leaves users disappointed in the tinted or poorly mixed quality of the light produced. For this reason, there are also RGBW varieties that include a white LED inside their package as well. Coding for these pixels will include four brightness values to describe a pixel color, red, green, blue, and white. This is similar to analog write in the example from an earlier episode. You provide a number from 0 to 255 to represent the brightness of each LED. The functions in the NeoPixel library take pixel numbers and these color values as arguments, then translate them into the commands to send along the pixels. I've soldered wires to the power, ground, and input pins on my pixels, and with my Arduino board unplugged, it's time to hook up the circuit. The red wire goes to 5 volts, and the black wire goes to ground, and the input goes to a pin on my microcontroller. The example uses pin 6. Be sure you are connecting the data line to the input end of the strip, as it won't work if you connect to the output. Power and ground can be connected anywhere along the strip. The code examples can be found in the examples menu at the bottom in a submenu with the library's name. I'm opening up the example called strand test. This first section instantiates the strip and sets up the configurable bits of the program, like the pins connected to the NeoPixel strip, the number of pixels, and the global brightness level. Defined statements are similar to variable declarations, but are used for information that does not change while the program is running, like the pin number or the number of LEDs. They take up less memory than regular variable declarations. Strip.show is used anytime you want the pixels to change. Setting the pixel colors and showing the latest changes are broken up into two separate commands. The main loop just calls some external functions, for instance, color wipe, which is defined down below the main loop. It takes two arguments, a color and a speed value in milliseconds. The function definition starts with what type of data the function will return or send back to the main program. In this case, the function returns nothing, it just controls the pixels. So void is used at the beginning of the definition. Next is the name of the function, which is totally up to you. Then in parentheses are the arguments the function takes. In this case, a 32-bit integer called color and an unsigned integer called weight. Inside the function, these local variables are used to reference information you passed to it from the main loop or from another function. The function itself steps through all of the pixels in the strip using a for loop and a NeoPixel library function called strip.numPixels. 
coloring and showing each one before moving on to the next. The other functions in the strand test program work the same way and use clever color math to achieve some stunning light patterns. You can easily modify color wipe to start coding up your own unique animation. I'll just copy the whole function definition, change the name of the function, and then I'll start playing around with the code, being sure to call the new function from inside the main loop. If you find an effect you like, you can stop editing that function and create a new one. Functions are a handy tool to separate out a chunk of code you want to access repeatedly and make your code easier to read. Once you're comfortable installing libraries and looking up how to use their built-in functions through the included examples and the library's documentation, the Arduino world really is your oyster. Moving beyond the basic inputs and outputs we covered in previous episodes, libraries let you easily talk to devices that communicate with data protocols like I2C or SPI. These devices use fewer wires to send and receive complex information. If you're feeling overwhelmed by all the new possibilities that just opened up to you, check out my guide on translating your Arduino project idea into code. Basically, you get each individual input and output working using library example code, then build up a new program from bits of other samples. Another thing I wanna show you at this point in your Arduino journey is how to install additional boards. Just like the library manager under the sketch menu, there's a boards manager under the tools menu. But unlike libraries, the boards manager needs to know where to look for the new board info. So if you wanna install the ESP board support, for instance, you need to first paste the URL for the ESP boards into this field in the Arduino preferences. Then go to the boards manager and you'll be able to see them in the list. You can add multiple boards manager URLs by separating them with a comma in this field. Sometimes compatible boards will also require the installation of a driver as well. So be sure to read the documentation carefully whenever you're getting ready to work with a new board. I've put links to some resources in the description. Leave your advice about Arduino libraries in the comments so we can all learn together. Check out the playlist with the rest of this series and subscribe to be sure you don't miss the next one. <laughs>